Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again, Itamar. It is Tuesday, we are about to enter the holiday of Shvisha Pesach, the seventh day of Passover. And why do I say a holiday? Because it's like, it's a very special, unique day. You know, the first day of Passover, and then we have the Cholomoed, like the week days of Passover. And then we have the, the, sec, the seventh, the finale of the holiday is called the seventh day of Passover, where we, it's just like the first day, it's like a Sabbath in itself, we don't do work. You know, we totally are in the Sabbath mode. And what makes it so special, the seventh day of Passover? And um, most people know, and they read about the holiday, they know that on the seventh day of Passover, we had the great event of the, of the splitting of the Red Sea. So we had, in the beginning of Passover, we talk about the ten plagues, we talk about the first part of the holiday, about, about us leaving Egypt. But there was something that we really, um, we reached another level totally by the splitting of the Red Sea. And it's, we have to try to understand what was so special. Like, you know, God, of course, could have done anyway and, and, and had, it, had it differently, the whole story. But there was something very special, that a level that we reached when we came to this, um, we came to the Red Sea and then God split the sea. The miracle that took place over there. And this, of course, in a very deep level, represents another stage, another stage of Israel's development as a nation of, of, of Hashem, as God's people something we achieved at that moment, we did not achieve in the first stage of, of the redemption process, right? We, we achieved it over here. Um, not only that, we see it's coupled with an, an amazing song that Israel sings, Az yes, Shia Moshe of Israel, then it's sung Israel and Moses, right? Moshe Rabbeinu and, and Israel sing a song of praise to God over the great miracle of, of the splitting of the sea. So we have to try to understand what is the meaning, what is the deep teaching. Or, of course, we can never cover all of these endless um, you know, endless messages of Torah, but let's try to get, try to connect to some of them. And what is a possible understanding of this deep meaning of the splitting of the Red Sea? And in order to do so, I'd like to begin with a passage of the Talmud brought down in, in the Tractate of Brachot, um, page 61. And the Talmud says, uh, it's a very famous story. And the Talmud talks about um, the evil kingdom of Rome. The emperor at that time was Hadrian. This is the time of Rabbi Akiva, as we know, is one of the ten martyrs. And we know that Hadrian, he quelled the rebellion of the Bar Kokhba rebellion in Israel. Right, we're talking, um, again, the time frame, we're talking about the first century um, after the destruction, you know, first century, common era, first century, the year 120, talking about a period of 130, and just get around that time of Hadrian the Emperor and the story which takes place here in the Talmud. We're going to see it mentioning Rabbi Akiva, who was one of the martyrs, as I said. And the Talmud says like this, one time, this evil kingdom of Hadrian, the Romans, they, dec they declared that Israel cannot study Torah. Wow, our life support. They're saying, no, we have no life support. Ba Papus ben Yehuda. Papus ben Yehuda, who was a, a, Jewish, um, a Jewish wise man at the time, comes along and says, Umitza'ol Rabbi Akiva, and he's found, he finds Rabbi Akiva. Shaya makil kihilot barabim. Rabbi Akiva was gathering crowds and teaching Torah and the masses. And he said to Amar le Akiva, he says, Akiva, are you afraid of, of the kingdom of Hadrian, the, the Romans? Are you afraid of the Romans? Amar lo em sholacha mashal. He says, I'm going to give you an example, a parable, Rabbi Akiva tells Papus. What does this liken to? He said, it's like into a fox that is walking along the riverbank. He saw a fish that are gathering in swarms of fish inside the river. So the fox says to the fish, what are you running away from? What are you afraid of? We're worried about the nets of men that are trying to catch us. Can you 
כשם שדאו אבותיים אבותיכם. So he says, you know something, let me, let me give you an advice, the fox says to the fish, why don't you come on the dry land and we can live together in peace, the way our forefathers did. אמרו לו, אתה הוא שאומרים עליך פיקח שבחיות. So the fish say to the fox, this is what they say about you, that you are the wise of the animals? לא פיקח אתה, you're not wise. אלא טיפש אתה, you are a fool. ומה במקום חיותנו אנו מתיירים? He goes, here we are, we are in the water, the place that we are nourishes, nourishes us and gives us life. And we're afraid in our habitat, our natural habitat. במקום מיתתנו על אחד כמה וכמה, if we're going to go to the dry land, which we can't survive, or the more so, are we obviously going to be in danger? So how could you even suggest such a foolish thing that we're going to come up, you know, to the land, the dry land. Afanachnu achshav, this is what Rabbi Kiva now continues the metaphor. Achshav, shanu yoshvim boskim ha-Torah, now explains what it means, this metaphor. We are sitting here learning Torah, right? Shekatuv ba kiheim chayeinu v'och yameinu, as it says in it, that the Torah is our life, it is our length of days, in every way it's our vitality. כך אם אנו הולכים ומבטלים ממנו, if we're going to stop studying Torah, על אחת כמה וכמה, all the more so, we are going to endanger our lives, if we stop drawing and nourishing ourselves from the source of the divine, of the beautiful Torah. אמרו לו, לא יהיו ימים מועטים עד שתפסו לרבי עקיבא וכבשו בבית הסורים. Many days didn't pass, and Rabbi Akiva was caught and he was brought into prison. ותפסו לפפוס בן יהודה. And also, Papus Ben Yudu was also caught. Vechavshu etzlo, and he was put in a, in a cell next to Rabbi Akiva. Amalo Papus, so Papus, um, Rabbi Akiva says to Papus, Mi aviach alachan, who brought you here? How did you get here in prison with me? I, I was teaching Torah, you weren't. Amal le asherecha Rabbi Akiva, so he says, Rabbi Akiva, you are so fortunate. Shnit pastal divrei Torah, you were arrested. For a good reason, because you were teaching Torah. So you were arrested for, for idealism. But me, I'm so misfortune. Why? Because I was arrested for, for no important reason. For things that weren't worth being arrested for, in other words. This story is extremely powerful. And it shows us that the Torah, of course, the Torah is our lifeline. And if we're taken out of our, away from our lifeline, we're nothing. We have nothing left. And it's something that is worth, of course, fighting for and dying for. Rabbi Kiva is saying that in the most, Rabbi Kiva eventually, we know that he was killed by, by the Romans. Um, he's one of the ten martyrs, we said. But he gave his life for this message that we can never stop being who we are, connecting ourselves to the source of the divine of the words of Hashem in the Torah itself. It's a very, very powerful message. Now, Taking this to what we're referring to about the great day of splitting of the sea, I want to bring to you the words of the famous Admor Zaken, the famous um, Chabad rabbi, um, the first of the Chabad rabbis, Rav Zalman Maladi, going back to the 1700s. And he writes a Kabbalistic work called Torah O. Torah is light. And he writes like this regarding the, the um, song of Az Yashir, of singing the song of praise to Hashem for taking us across the Red Sea, splitting the Red Sea for us. And he writes like this. And he says, He goes, the difference between the dry land and the sea, and on a physical level, He says, if you look at the creations, the creatures of the sea are totally hidden. Right? The voyage to the bottom of the sea. They're down there, they're within the sea, you can't, they're, they're hidden from the eyes. And their life force, their habitat, everything they receive is from, from inside that sea. They get their oxygen, they get all their vitality from the sea. They can't live on the ground. They come to dry land, they die. They can't survive. But we take the creatures of the land. 
הנה הארץ תוציא צמחה ועושה פרי למעלה. For example, we'd start with the, with the plant life. What happens to plant life? Trees grow, right? The tree, the leaves, the, you know, the photosynthesis of, of you know, creating plant stuff. You know, we're not familiar with what that goes on, right? That happens within the, within the um, leaves. And then all of a sudden the trees give forth fruit, right? And they're separate from the ground, right? We don't really pay attention that they're nourishing themselves from the ground, right? And he goes on to say, um, even all the more so, if we look at um, the other creations that are on, gra- on, the, on the ground, not in the sea, for example, let's take animals and human life, all of us that are just walking around the dry land, right? We don't pay attention that we, of course, receive our nourishment from the ground, right? On a physical, we're talking about a physical sense, right? Because all animals need to, you know, that we raise for our, for, you know, or different kind of animals, right? They, of course, uh, rely on plant life at the end of the day, and, and all at the end of the day, all animals rely on that plant life. And, of course, we lie in the oxygen that the plants produce, right? So we, as human beings or, or animals, all rely on the existence of plants. And it's very important to understand that. And it's connected to the ground. But we don't see that. So on an external way, we're sort of disconnected from that situation. And that's what he goes on to say. In spirituality, in the Kabbalistic terms, there is something called the hidden world. And this can be called the physical world, right? The external world, the revealed world. And the sea represents a place where it's the hidden world. Everything is covered over. But in reality, in that hidden world, what do you see? You are revealed something very special, that the source of that sea is your life force. So we can take this and as a comparison to the divine. We understand that when people are on a very high spiritual level, the righteous understand right away that they're receiving their divine source from God all the time. He is nourishing them, right? He's nourishing the entire world, but they see that. They're constantly connected to Hashem. So that is represented by the hidden world, right? That we realize, the sea, that we're, without God's nourishing us, one second, we're gone. We're just not going to be here, right? So what happens later on a physical sense, of course, begins in a spiritual sense. Without God's nourishment, we have no existence anymore. But that is reflected within the sea, in the, in the hidden world. Everything comes from the source, from the divine source. On the physical world, right, that re- the revealed situation, people could forget that we receive nourishment from God, we live our lives, and, and every day people go to work. Well, today people are not going to work so easily. But the whole corona is making us wake up, maybe, wait a second. You know, obviously there's a God in the world. People are beginning to realize that there's something much greater than, than the physical world. But... On, of course, a, re- a simple understanding of, a, of an everyday understanding, of people going around, walking on the dry land, they're not paying attention. It's the, it's the physical world, the, the external world, right? And the God is present, not felt so easily. But the spiritual world, the sea, that represents something that God is, you feel God's presence. You see that everything is rooted in the Creator, the Divine. And that's an important message here that the Balatanya is giving us at this moment to realize that, wow. You know something? God is here. We have to connect ourselves to Hashem. Now, this great event of splitting of the sea is exactly that. It represents the highest connection with Hashem. As our prophets, you know, our Torah, our sages talk about what the Shifcha Layam, what the maidservant on at the splitting of the sea, saw even prophets like Yechezkel ben Buzi, Ezekiel the prophet, or Isaiah did not see what, what the simple Jewish people saw, the simple Jews, even the most simple Jews and all Jews saw on the splitting of the sea. They reached a tremendous, tremendous high level that no one was able to, to achieve, even the great prophets, these great prophets of, of Israel later on. So we see that the sea represented over here, the splitting of the sea, actually God gave us, opened, the, opened up the heavens and allowed Israel to touch upon the most inner chambers of his presence, to connect in, to God in such a very, very high, lofty way that wasn't allowed 
on a normal situation for the mainstream. Right? Only great prophets were able to reach very high spiritual levels, but this was still the highest. It was so powerful. And I want to go and I want to read a midrash. Um, a very... The midrash says like this, This is my God and I will exalt him. And there are different explanations of what Ze'elivanveil means. Ze means to point out, right? So one explanation is given in Ze'eli, this is my God, and I will make him a sanctuary within me. So every person, you know, it says, God says, um, let them make a sanctuary, I will reside amongst them. And I will, and I will. So really, God is telling every person, you know, that we are a sanctuary, and we have to make ourselves as a vessel for, for the divine. Right? Anyway, so that verse in, brought down in, in um, Exodus um, 15, verse number 2, the Midrash says like this, Midrash Rabbah, Amar Rabbi Berechia, one of the Amoraim from Israel, he says, Bo Now the reason I say Israel is because they were, the periods of the Amoraim, there were Generations in Babylon at the same time as parallel generations in, in Israel. The Jews that, rem- that were living in Babylon, Jews were living in, in Israel. This was after the destruction of a temple, talking about a Moric period anywhere from the um, early 3rd century through the, um, the, the 6th century. And that was the different generations of Amoraim. But here we have Rabbi Brechia, one of the Amoraim of Israel, and he says like this regarding the verse. How great were those who went down to the sea? It's referring to, the, again, the splitting of the sea. Moshe, Moshe, we all know, um, says, and if we look in Exodus, go to the verse a moment and check it out. Exodus 33, verse number 18, when Moshe or Abeno, Moses asked for God to show him his honor, his glory. And God says, you can't see my face. At the end he gave him a little hint, as it says, And God says, uh, when my presence passes, I will place you within inside the rock. I will cover, hover over you, my hand, until you pass, until I pass. It's a very deep spiritual level that Moses requested to be on, and God didn't allow him to achieve it. And we look in the, um, the chariot of Ezekiel. He talks about the, you know, the chariot, as we all know, the vision of the chariot. And it says, and the animals that are actually carrying the chair, the throne of the divine throne, they do not understand what the, what the throne really is all about, above that level. And when time has come for the angels to say praise, they say, where's God? Where's God? We don't know if he's here, you know, or he's in another place. Wherever God is, let us say, Baruch Kvod Hashem, blessed be the presence of Hashem. In other words, this is the, the Midrash here is depicting a very powerful spiritual level where the angels are on such a high level, close to God and the throne, but they, they don't know, of course, they can't go beyond that, who, where they are, and they can't even they say, where's God? And they say, well, wherever God is, we're praising Him. It's, God is way beyond, obviously, an infinite level is way beyond anything we can fathom in our furthest imagination there is, God's above everything. So the angels did, were sort of stopped at that level. The Olei Hayam, now the Midrash continues, but those who came to the sea, kol echad vechad mare be'etzvo, everyone points out, v'omer ze'ili van ve'egos, this is my God and I will glorify him. Right, I will make him a sanctuary for me. So that's saying, wow, they were able to actually point out, this is my God. Now obviously it's referring to a higher level of achievement because even what we received on, on splitting of the sea, no one can actually ever see God. But this shows, this was, the Midrash is trying to say, this was such a high level. Something that even Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't able to, to vision, as it says. Of course, Moshe Rabbeinu was there at the sea, so he saw it there. Amalem HaKadosh Baruch Yisrael, Ba'olam Hazeh, Amaltem 
לפניי, לפניי, לפניי פעם אחת, זה אלי, right? In this, this time period now, when this happened in the splitting of, of the sea, you say, you were able to point out and say, this is Hashem. You reach just a high spiritual level. אבל עתיד לבוא, but it, in the future, אתם אומרים אותו, אותו דבר פעמיים, you're going to be able to say it twice. שנאמר, and I read that a, a verse in Isaiah 25, verse number 9. Read the verse. ואמר ביום ההוא, on that time, you will say, הנה אלוהינו זה, this is our God. קיווינו לו, we are, learn, we are yearning for Hashem. ויושענו, and he's brought us our salvation, he saved us. זה השם again, it says, זה השם, this is God. קיווינו לו. We are, we are yearning for him. נגילה, we will rejoice ונשמח and be happy בישועתו and his salvation. So here, we, a fascinating midrash ends with, in the future, it's going to be a double bang. And not only once, but we're going to actually reach this level twice. It's referring to a, a highest level that we're going to be able to achieve again in the end of days, in the times when, when the nation, the of Israel will lead the world to redemption, the final to redemption. I'm going to reach that level that we reached again on, on, on splitting of the sea. So in reality, we reached a higher level than Sinai here. And that's what's so powerful about the seventh day of Passover, that the Midrash is talking about this such a powerful level that even Moses himself didn't reach. Again, on his normal prophetic level. But here, of course, he reached it with all of Israel uh, at the splitting of the sea. Now, one of the greatest modern rabbis of all time, and passed away in, in 1935, Rav Kook, the chief rabbi of Palestine at the time, and he has a beautiful, um, he brings down this midrash and he discusses, goes into detail to try to explain how is it possible that Moshe Rabbeinu, that Moses didn't, wasn't able to achieve on a normal level what Israel, the simple maidservant on the sea, was able to achieve here on the seventh day of Passover, on the splitting of the sea, and he explained in a very profound way he goes into a, a powerful discussion of prophecy, of how, and he, and he explains, and I want to mention just a little bit of that, because we don't have time to go through the whole amazing um, essay of Rav Kook, maybe some other time, and Rav Kook says, first he asks the question, because we must clarify, how can we say that here, uh, they were able to receive the, those who went down to the sea by the splitting of the sea were able to receive more than Moshe Rabbeinu, the prophet Moses did, right? On his general, you know, he was the highest prophet there was on his normal prophecy stage. And, and he brings that as a question. And he goes, obviously, this requires tremendous understanding. What's going on over here? And he goes on to say, and just read part of uh, just a few points here I want to mention. He says, he goes, prophecy is not what, what the philosophers thought prophecy was all about. That's a natural thing. What, what is philosophers, the ancient philosophers like Aristotle, they believed if a person, you know, perfects himself and meditates and, you know, on his, uses his, um, what's it called, his intellect, powerful intellect, develops his intellect in the highest way, a person like that is able to achieve prophecy. Any person can achieve prophecy if he really... Um, works very hard in developing himself in, a, in his intellect in a very, very deep fashion. And Rav Kook writes, he writes, ובאמת לא עלתה בי אדם לבוא עד תכונתה ולהשיג קצת ממנה. He goes, but in reality, we don't see any, we don't see any philosopher in reality that has truly um, received prophecy. But what does he say? אבל באמת הוא עניין נשגב מכל דרכי הטבע. But prophecy is beyond all nature. That's something that goes way beyond nature. And it's the opposite of nature. It's totally, in another realm, totally prophecy. Because it is totally different than all nature. So we know that nature is going to try to go against it. It's going to be naturally, it's going to clash with it. But what overcomes nature is the power, now listen to this word Rav Kook uses here, Kedusha, holiness. What makes a prophet is holiness. Kedusha, Hanishpat al-Nefesh Anavi, which is, descends upon the soul of the prophet. That holiness. Minatsech et and totally overcomes 
nature. This amazing event, of course, goes on to, to, to show us the difference between the ten plagues, which were, they were, they were not, they were basically within the framework of nature still. But here on the splitting of the sea, something happened different. And what happened here that God totally broke all the rules of nature. This went beyond all of nature. And the finale of it all was that Israel was able to reach a level beyond any possible prophetic level. This is God now will glorify him here, pointing out here. We are now on the highest possible level that you mean can reach, or we'll reach it again in the future. This message is what the seventh day of Passover is all about. Is God is showing that the world we live in, this world that we spoke about the dry land, we could, we separate ourselves, unfortunately, when the dry land, we totally separate ourselves sometimes. And we forget that we're surrounded by our life force, the creator of the universe. Not to mention on the physical, we don't even think about the physical way we sustain ourselves. Obviously, on the spiritual way, it's even further from us, unfortunately. But the whole, our path, our journey in this world is to try to connect to our life force and understand where do we receive our divine energy from and our power to live and exist in this world and in the future world and forever, forever and ever. That comes from the creator of the universe. And this is what we have to break those barriers that separate us from Hashem. What's going on now, I have to mention Corona because it's so obvious, is that this, this little microorganism, right? Part of nature is turning the world upside down. They don't know what to do, how to handle it. It's just something that's, we have to realize the only ways for us to go beyond nature now. We have to rise above nature. And that is the seventh day of Passover. We are rising above nature. And we are revealing our life force, what we are connecting totally, like the fish in the sea that connect. And they're constantly aware of that life force. The minute they separate themselves, they die. If we separate ourselves from God, we're not, we don't exist anymore. And that is what we have to reach and achieve on this day. It's coming. We're going to sing with all our heart and soul the song of praise to Hashem. We realize that our power and our, our, our rejoice and our energy and everything comes from Hashem. We have to be aware. That song reveals that high spiritual level it touches upon what we reached at that great moment of the splitting of the sea. And it's amazing. If you look in Hebrew, it says, Az Yashia, then Moses will sing. Why? And all of Israel. Showing that, that's in Hebrew, Az means then, in the future. Not only it happened at that time then, but it's going to happen again later. Az can mean in the future, not only then in the past. And that is what it's hinting to, we spoke about Isaiah, when Israel will reach that level, prophetic level, of, of connecting to Hashem, the highest level in all the world, as a matter of fact, is going to stream as Israel is a light to the nations, will feel that connection with Hashem, and the whole world will sing in, unis in, 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 in unison a song of praise to the Creator of the universe, that He is our life force, and He will walk us, He is walking, is walking with us all the time through the most difficult times, and at the end we will see that Hashem is with us, and He will be there for all of us. And this terrible crisis we're in now is always, after a crisis, is a great spiritual jump forward, which we will all jump forward towards the final redemption. Have a beautiful Chag Sameach, Pesach Sameach, and God willing, we will again meet very soon um, in our next lesson. I'm not saying Shabbat Shalom, I'll say Chag Sameach, because Shabbat hopefully on Friday before um, Shabbat will have a chance to give another lesson. So anyway, bye-bye for now. Chag Sameach. Shalom, Shalom.